Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at something you can do which is very simple, very straightforward, and could potentially stop your 100% disk access usage, and also lag and stutter in games, programs, and Windows in general. Interested? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at a way of making Windows work a little bit better. Now there's probably a lot of things we can do to make Windows a little bit better, but this one actually, for me personally, was very, very handy. Now for those of you that watch the channel for a long time, you'll know that I do edit with Adobe Premiere, which in itself has a, a whole host of things which go wrong with it. One of the things which I find most problematic is scrubbing along the timeline, especially when using 4K footage and multiple 4K footage on the same timeline. So something which uh, did occur to me is the fact that possibly I'm running out of memory. Now actually my system has 32 gigs of RAM which for 4K editing is kind of okay, should be fine. I don't use proxies so I am overloading the system a little bit as this is preferable to my workflow. All this aside also I have been finding recently the occasional lag and a little bit of stutter in some of my favourite games which uh, can be annoying especially when you've got a relatively high end system. So for those of you that have got a high-end system and you're thinking, well, this doesn't make any difference to me because I've got tons of RAM or I've got the fastest hard drives or the fastest SSDs, then it might be worth trying this for yourself and seeing how you actually get on. Now, what we're talking about today is memory compression. Now, this is a feature which was added, I believe, in Windows 10 and is in Windows 11, which compresses a small section of RAM into kind of like a virtual hard drive, similar to the way that the swap file works with Windows with hard drives. It's very complicated, but essentially it's designed to make Windows smoother. In most cases, it does work out that way, but if there's a lot of background I.O. processes going on, that can actually have a negative effect and actually make your games lag and stutter, which is very bizarre being that is the whole reason it was actually designed to be used. This is more for older systems, which had less memory, etc., and less background tasks, but now as specs have got better, memory's got bigger, this appears to be actually causing more problems than it actually solves. So let's go over to the computer now and I'll show you how to disable and also how to re-enable memory compression on your PC. It's pretty straightforward. So this is my Windows 11 desktop and I've actually put some of the details into a notepad document which I'll be copying and pasting into the description of the video you're watching. So it's uh, a lot easier for you to do. Now the first thing to do, see if memory compression is actually enabled or not. Easy way of doing that is to press your Windows key and the X key, and then you want to choose Task Manager, and then we can see Task Manager has come up here on the side. If you go into the Performance tab and select Memory, which you can see I've already done previously, currently it tells you how much RAM is actually in use, how much is available, and in brackets here it'll tell you how much of that memory is actually compressed. Now, as you can see, at the moment, I have zero megabytes compressed, and that is because I've actually turned compression off. So you might find that there is a few megabytes here. Worst case scenario, there's a few gigabytes here. It does all mount up. Similar to the way that Windows caches RAM, as you can see here. Currently, we've got five gigabytes of RAM cached. Again, we have done videos on that previously on RAM caching and how to release some of that memory from cache. But today we're going to be looking at compressed RAM. So we've established that the compressed RAM is off currently. So let's take the assumption that it's actually on. So how do you actually turn it off? So the first thing to do is to actually open up a terminal or PowerShell. And to do that, you can just click on the Windows flag and you can either type in terminal or power, whichever you want to do. Make sure whichever one you do, you right click and choose run as administrator. This is extremely important. You'll come up with the user account control, so just click yes. And obviously, do be aware that all these changes, although they can be undone, it's probably a good idea to do a backup of your system before you go ahead and do this. So again, from here, you can actually work out if memory compression is on or off. And in order to do that, you can copy and paste this, or you can type it in for yourself. And that is copy-mmagent. And we'll just copy that in there and paste it in and press enter. And as you can see, currently it says memory compression false. So let's get this to a state where memory compression is actually turned on. So as you can see, I've got two sections here, one for disable and one for enable. So let's enable. We'll copy that and we'll paste it over here. So enable dash 
mm agent dash mc and I hit enter. This will take a couple of seconds, so just let it do its thing. There isn't any confirmation as such, it just goes back to the command prompt. So if we now do get mm agent, now if you want to cycle through previous commands you've typed in, just press the up or down arrow key. And as we can see now, memory compression is set to true. So now what we want to do is to disable, so we'll paste that in there. Again, you can just type in if you want to, just make sure you get it to look exactly as it is here. So uppercase areas where they're uppercase, hit enter. And then we can check. And we see, yeah, it's set back to false. So that is essentially it. That is all you need to do to toggle between the two states of compression being on and off. I would suggest it's probably worth actually, if you can, doing a Cinebench run or just do some kind of benchmarking. You will probably find if you have Task Manager open um, between the two, when it's actually disabled, compressed memory, you'll probably find your CPU usage is actually considerably lower overall. Now obviously CPU usage will spike here and there, but I think you will find that your CPU usage will be a little bit less. And also you'll find that your memory usage is a little bit less as well, weirdly. And obviously because your SSD or hard disk drive isn't being used to cache, then again, all three of those can potentially benefit. So there you go, nice and easy to do. And actually when I did do some testing, I've run a couple of uh, instances of Cinebench. And at the moment, if you look on the screen now, you'll see the before which was somewhere in around about the 9000 range. This is my Ryzen 5 3600, so not anything overly elaborate. And this is with 16 gigs of RAM. Now, if we switch over to the disabled version, you'll see that we've gained a few points, which, yeah, it isn't a huge amount and potentially could be within margin of error. I did run it a couple of times and every time it was slightly better. So it is swings and roundabouts. Your system may or may not respond in the same way that mine did, but certainly it's worth giving it a try. It is a free thing, you can just try it, and if it doesn't work, just revert it back. Obviously, if you do get any kind of um, weird things going on, blue screens, etc., etc., then it's probably because, purely and simply, you're trying to do too much for your system, and you simply don't have the resources to do it. Now, obviously, that's a little bit generic. It could be the other way around. If you're not too sure, head over to our Discord. The links are in the video description, and we can go through your system and see if what you're trying to do is actually overloading your system anyway, hence why you're getting these lags, spikes and all kinds of weird stuff going on. So anyway, if you're using Adobe Premiere, definitely worth giving it a try. It will make your timeline considerably smoother, as it has done with mine. Game for games, online games, and other things, you may find this improves your performance. You may find it actually knocks things back a bit, but certainly you can undo it should you need to. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. Let us know if you've had a positive or a negative result. And don't forget to click on the like button and also the subscribe button if you haven't already. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.